Now let's have a look at the Scilab, which is mentored by Ms. Shamika Nair and managed by Mr. Kiran Kishore. The Scilab has two sub-projects. The first one is Scilab Octave Interface, which facilitates easy use of Octave, Octave through Scilab console. It adds to Scilab functionalities by providing a link to Octave's libraries and toolboxes. The second one is Image Processing for Assessment of Acute Kidney Injury using Scilab. Scilab uses image processing techniques to extract information about various image processing from the given kidney image. So I would like to request the team to come up and present. Hello, sir. Uh, basically, our project was related to Scilab. We were working on Scilab. We, we were given the task to promote Scilab. And uh, the project was individual. Uh, the project which was given to me was uh, doing image processing of a complex image which is used in biomedical applications or as in industrial uh, suppliers and all those things which, uh, which, which requires a lot of complex image processing. So there was a mainstream uh, mentality that this can be done only in proprietary softwares like MATLAB and other softwares. So, Sir gave me a task to do it in an open source platform and for that Scilab was a better, better option. This was the work assigned to me. Uh, that was a, uh, a complex image was given to me of a human kidney which was damaged and it was taken from fluorescence microangiography for quantitative assessment of particular cancer. Capitally changes after kidney injury. So basically it, con uh, it contained red and green spots where the red Red spots uh, showed the uh, like they display the uh, the kidney uh, the injury in the kidney and the green parts were the capillaries. So this was the actual image which was given to me, and uh, basically these type of images are they can be done uh, using MATLAB software, but uh, using a uh, this open source software would be an easier approach for everyone who around the globe that they can use it. Uh, free first of all and they should they should have not bought the matlab software as in the search so the prerequisites for the tools and the prerequisites for this uh, pla the image processing were ipd and sivp ipd was image processing designs uh, tool and sivp was scilab image and video processing tool uh, for this project these both tools were used together to somewhat extra reach to the level of matlab we use both the software's uh, tools so that it can be used for that. Uh, the algorithm as in such was, uh, the first step was to convert the RGB image which was having uh, 0 to 255 uh, pixels of every, every color, red, green and blue as it stands. And it was converted into a standard gray image first. And that gray image was further processed and standardized using the IPD tool. And then the, it was filtered in only red patches and the green patches. The red patches, as I told you already, it, uh, it shows the injury. And the green patches, as you can see in this image, uh, it shows the capillaries which are present in the image. So this is the image which is being captured uh, from the uh, confocal microscopy. Yeah, but it already has red and green. Yeah, so the task was to find the distance between the red and the injury, injured part and the capillaries which are present over there. As I told you, uh, it was filtered into red patches and green patches for further processing. So this was the image which was transformed into a gray, a gray image. And then it was standardized as I told you. And then as you can see, it was uh, filtered into the red patches and the green patches which is, which is present over here. Uh, as you can see in the green patches, there is no red component and in the red, uh, red patches, there is no green component. So the third, third phase was uh, writing this image and we cannot process this image as such because this is having gray, this is actually a gray image which has been filtered so we cannot process this image as such because it is very big first of all and we cannot identify the values in the matrix uh, where all the red patches are present we cannot identify that and similarly for green also so uh, this uh, using a threshold Using the histogram of the uh, red image, the for, for, from now I will uh, say this as a red image, the red patch is one. So uh, this red image, it was transformed into a binary image first. And then after that it was transformed into a uh, logical image using only true and false values. 
so when it was transformed uh, it was it looked like this uh, the left side this this thing uh, but it was inverted and in scilab we have this like the black parts are the false part and the uh, white part are the uh, true part so we inverted the image to get the positions of the true values so this was the inversion and this was the histogram from where we used the threshold value uh, you can see the starting one is the histogram of the whole image and the second one represents the histogram of only the red particles and uh, as you can see here it's not visible i guess yeah this 200 value we took it as a threshold and we made this uh, logical image uh, by using this after using this uh, the edge edge uh, edge of the shape of the uh, red red patches they can estimate the area and with that we can find the centroid of each the red spots to find the point uh, where the distance is to be measured. You said use IPD and your other SVE. SIVB tool. Why only one? Why cannot you not? not so because in IPD tool you don't have a writing option. So as you are processing the image, you want it to be in a serial order. You don't want to go again and save the image or save the image in the paint and then save it in a PNG file and then call it back. No, but what, what you have done essentially is simple image processing. Yes, sir. Okay, there is no image cleanup, no uh, removal of dirty things, etc. Right? Yes, sir. Simple image processing, simple threshold. Yes, sir. That any image processing software will give. You. Why you have to combine two? No, sir. Like image processing software, as in uh, this is this is done in Scilab. Uh, this is you done said in SVI. I, I think was some image processing. In, uh, that this is the tool in Scilab. Huh. This both are. Huh. This why, both. Why? Why I need two tools? Yes, sir. I'll tell you that in IPD, uh, like as I told you, IPD filters this these two things. The next SIVP writes this file, uh, IPD does not have writing option. So, then you should use SVID only to filter the thing. No, 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 no. but SIVP do not filter the image. Oh, every image processing will allow you a, a simple filter. So, Scilab has this advantage that you can use it in, uh, you know, in a serial file. Scilab form. allows programming, right? Yes, sir. Huh. In, in Scilab, for image processing, you can use two toolboxes or if you just, because IPD only, if you will do IPD only, use IPD only, this is only used for image uh, editing and also for enhancement, image enhancement. But we have used it here as a, so this was the logical, the same thing was done with the green patches. This was the logical green and uh, a threshold was given as I told you and the edges of the green were found out which were uh, dark enough, the fluorescent edges and rest of the edges were neglected. Then after that we like uh, the work uh, was to find the edges, the canny edges of the red patches so that we can find the centroid of the of each of the patch so that we can calculate the distance from any of the uh, capillaries which are present in the image, green capillaries as such. So this image was firstly converted into a uh, Sobel edge and then using that Sobel edge image we converted it into a canny edge which was a, a tougher task this was the uh, image which was done after that, uh, which we got after that and you can see the edges which are present over here, it's just the edges, not anything else. So by this, we can find out the centroid of the image. So as if, in the, as if now, what we did was we took the, a sample patch, not all the patches, because we just found out the, the pixel location of that patch. So we found out the the centroid, uh, not the centroid, the center of the patch using uh, this tool. So the total step procedure, procedure was the conversion of the image from RGB to gray and the second thing was the separation of red and green. Then we standardized the image, it was converted into binary and then eventually it was converted into a logical image. The third thing was identification of red patches and the centroid detection of the red patches. And the final thing was the calculation of distance uh, from red part of centroid to the green parts. So the total methodolo methodology is this. Uh, we have uh, got the centroid point of one, one of the patches, but uh, for every patches we, we are doing, we are working on it. Future work is to find the centroid location of all the patches and to find the area of all the patches individually and then using those two, we can find the distance from points of the red patches to the reference of the green image. Any questions? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is B. Babu Reddy. I'm doing internship here under Shamika ma'am on Scilab and Octave interface. This is the outline of this presentation. Then first introduction. The objective of my project is to create an interface between Scilab and Octave. Scilab and Octave are both 
do open source softwares for numerical computations. But why you need inter interface between these two softwares? The reason is we have both advantages and disadvantages in both Scilab and Octave. To overcome those, we need some interface. Coming to Scilab, Scilab has good graphical user interface, whereas Octave does not have that thing. Then Octave, Octave is very compatible with MATLAB, then Scilab does not compatible with MATLAB. If you create an interface between these two softwares, we can make we can provide virtual GUI for Octave and as well as we can make Scilab compatible with MATLAB. Okay. The approach which I have followed is to create interface between these two softwares, we have two options. The number one is executing Scilab commands in Octave, then another one is executing Octave commands in Scilab. I have chosen second one because Octave do not have GUI. So, so our objective is to execute Octave commands in Scilab. So, first we have to give Octave input to Octave and we have to take Octave output from Octave, we have to display that output in Scilab. For this whole data transformation, I have used some temporary files. Both of these are working on the same system? Oh, yes. Then why temporary files? Both of them are unique processes? Yes. Then why temporary files? We can't give direct Octave, Octave output directly to Scilab. Why not? The data types may be distinct. No, 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 it does not matter. I am just questioning why a temporary file. For Unix has got things like pipes. Yes. Correct? Why you will not use them? To use piping, we have to give Octave output directly to Scilab. Yeah. But there, there, there is a problem with data structure. The representation of data no, structures no. is entirely different. You are using a temporary file, right? Yes. Sir. Ah. I am using temporary file to convert Octave Scilab equivalent data structure for Octave data structure. Whatever you do, what I am saying is why temporary file? Whatever you do, why are you not using a pipe mechanism? For pipe mechanism, we have to store output somewhere to convert. No, not when I use pipe. If you use pipe, we have to pass Octave output directly to the Scilab console. Using Whatever pipe. you write to a temporary file, you should write to a pipe. Okay. What whenever you read from a temporary file, you should read from a pipe. There is a standard way in Unix to for process to communicate. If there are two processes in Unix, they should never communicate simultaneously running and in real time processes. They should not communicate through temporary files, they should communicate with a pipe. That is the Unix mechanism. The system has given a mechanism to communicate for two processes. Data communication between processes should be through pipes not through temporary files. How does the second process know what file is to read? I have already defined all those are standard files, I defined in program. So, that is exactly that is why you should use pipe. No. So, if on the same system, if some other user logs in and also runs the program simultaneously, what will happen? It Two works. people are running Skylab on the system and both of them want to use Octave. How will it work? This point of main aim is to provide GUI for Octave. I understand. So, you should spawn Octave with a pipe. There is something called spawning also. Okay. So, when you spawn a separate process, your uh, Skylab should run a separate process called uh, Octave and establish a two way pipe. Two way pipes also can be established, it is a little difficult. There are, there are dif different methods of inter process communication in Unix and you should have used those rather than temporary file. Temporary files is the worst mechanism. Okay. The structure of interface, in this interface these five files are imp important file. First is init.scilab file that is initializes the whole setup by linking C routines and Scilab routines to the Scilab console. Then second one is sci2octo Scilab file. This file contains the method called sci2octo method which takes the input Scilab Octave command input and it, it gives the input to the Octave and takes the output from the Octave and it displays on its console. Then coming to Saito Oct C, the C program activates the Octave to run the Octave input file and it removes the unwanted output characters in Octave output. Then Octave file is temporary file which, to, which is used to store the Octave input then Octave output txt file is used to store the Octave output. Here is the demo. First we have to execute the init.scilab file in scilab console. 
then it will link the C programs and uh, scilab programs to scilab. His enmity and is a octave function which is takes complex matrix as argument and returns a boolean value indicating that whether the given matrix is hermitian matrix or not. First I am defining here matrix 1 is a complex matrix, complex square matrix. Then I am calling, we can call octave from scilab in two ways. The first way is giving complete octave, octave command as a input, as a one argument. Then another one is separating arguments and uh, octave commands. Then we can give in both ways. But second one is preferable. Here is another example to in octave we have poly out method, we have poly out function which takes vector and one character as a arguments and displays polynomial equation. Here we can use third party packages also. Here I have used control system package. Conclusion it is useful for scilab users who are really migrated from the octave they no need to worry about the octave advanced functionalities. We can make scilab as compatible with MATLAB. <coughs>